Boom. All right, what's going on, you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk to you about whether or not gold and silver may be making a comeback. It's been a while since we discussed these two. As many of you know, they have been in a longer term correction that spanned over half a year at this point, but they are still the legacy inflation hedge plays. And you guys know I love me some inflation hedge assets, especially in our current macroeconomic environment. So always excited to talk some shiny stuff. Let's get into it. As always, we'll quickly go over each topic we're going to be discussing, and then we'll dive into each one individually. To kick it off, of course, we will establish a fundamental understanding of why I personally like gold and silver at this point in time. So we will read over this write-up that I made for you guys titled Gold and Silver, Why Precious Metals, Why Now? And then just, again, go over my, my summarized thoughts as to why I'm bullish on precious metals personally. So after that, we will dive into the charts in the back. So with CFDs on both gold and silver, so it's just gold and silver spot price these are 24 7 markets which i really like not going to dive into any specific stocks today but of course you guys if gold and silver do well it's very likely that gold and silver related stocks like mining companies do well as well Okay, so we'll just take a look at gold and silver, focus on the macro. We're going to stay on the daily candles here on TradingView. So I will talk price targets with you guys, and uh, I will talk to you guys about both scenarios I see potentially playing out to the downside and upside for both gold and silver. Because again, considering we're printing so, look, US, every government around the world is printing so many trillions of dollars and uh, whatever fiat currency they have. Um, of course, again, inflation edge assets like gold and silver, it, it, from a fundamental perspective, it's such a good argument in my mind. Okay, so we will take a look at them on the charts, you guys. I will talk to you guys about potential price targets once again to the upside and downside and just general technical analysis. Okay, so gold spot, silver spot. And then after we touch on gold and silver, just from a macro perspective, bird's eye view, we are going to dive into a sponsored review of our friends over at Phoenix Gold Resources. So this is a very cool, very small micro cap company, which you guys know always excites me called once again phoenix gold resources very cool company of course involved with gold as the name implies the shiny stuff but they are also involved in zinc and copper which are obviously you going to be used heavily in the future of evs and whatnot and just energy in the in the ev sector so that is an extra argument as to why this is a cool company so we're going to take a quick look at their website then we're going to go over there a few points that i feel like are important to share with you guys on their investor presentation but as always you guys always do your own research on these companies but we do appreciate our sponsors and those who make this possible so waves family show them some love appreciate if you stick around for that once again phoenix gold resources their ticker symbol is otc pgrcf all right let us dive in to this write-up so gold and silver again why precious metals why now as you guys know i've been a huge fan of inflation hedge assets for a while now in all honesty i believe bitcoin is the king of inflation hedges but that doesn't mean i can't be bullish on gold and silver as well ever since the government started printing trillions of dollars it's been very obvious to me that safe haven assets like silver and gold would perform well although gold and silver have seen a lengthy correction again like six months six months or so at this point i still believe there is upside ahead with unlimited qe or quantitative easing at the disposal of the federal reserve the upside for inflation hedges becomes unlimited as well so again you guys jay powell just had that conference a few days ago talking about how rates interest rates pretty much going to stay at zero and uh again they're just going to keep printing dollars to to easy economy as much as they can and that is obviously very not good for the dollar over the long term but it is good for once again inflation hedge assets like gold silver bitcoin all the goodies we talk about here on the channel all right. The more dollars they print, the more devalued they become, and the more people want to keep their wealth safe in hard money assets like God's money, gold, and silver. All right. So again, you guys just summarize thoughts right there. I know many of you know I think this, but just always have to sum it up for you guys and remind you guys as well as myself of why I, I like these two assets as asset classes and as potential investments. All right. So again, you guys jump into trading view. Uh, we are going to keep, we're not going to go a short term time frame. The short term for these two, because there's such macro, such like zoom out assets as is, like pretty low volatility for the most part. Uh, I feel like the long term view is going to be a lot more important and more relevant, especially once again, because these two have been in a correction for so long. So, uh, again, daily candles for both of these. Let's get into it. So, gold and silver, again, gold peaked out way back here in August of 2020. Again, you guys, this correction has been spanning a very long time after a very, very crazy run. So, March lows, again, liquidity crisis of March 2020 when everything fell off fell off of a cliff uh gold actually rebounded nicely and uh, once again in august of 2020 it did set an all-time high at over two thousand dollars so very big deal for big big deal for gold 
Since then, though, we have been in just a consistent downtrend. You've seen some double tops play out here. But overall, what I'm really looking at here and what I feel like is most important and what I'm keeping my eye on personally is this ascending, uh, descending channel. I'm sorry, I'm so used to talking about ascending channels. But this is a descending channel. So gold is in a very long-term descending channel over the course of this correction, just bouncing up and down pretty strong lines of resistance. Uh, obviously, you could take this into account. But this is obviously a more uh, a more solid line of resistance on the top side of this descending channel. So pretty much what I'm looking for. And as always, you guys, I recommend you guys go into trading view for yourself. Draw these trend lines for yourself. If you are interested in trading these assets and keep an eye on them for yourself and when they break or when they break down, break again, either to the upside or downside, that will tell uh, that will tell the tale, the tail of the tape for whether you're going to see more downside or upside ahead or at least the likelihood of either direction. So exactly what, I, what I'm looking for personally is going to be gold to break out of this descending channel. We would have to close over the course of the month. So just say by April 1st, just to make this kind of somewhat timely, April 1st, if we if gold can close above 1800, I think it's very likely that we see another nice run up. Again, you, you do get some fake outs here. So uh, this trend line will likely come into play. Again, you just draw a trend line like this. If that does happen, just uh, again, roughly like that. So if we if we break above this area, I think it's very likely we'll run up to test the, the top side of like the overall top side using the the absolute high of this of this little bounce that gold saw over the course of this correction um so gold pretty much over the course of the next month, if we break above 1900 is going to be what I'm really looking for for gold to see new all time high. So if that does happen, I think it's very likely for gold to test the overall line of resistance. This is a very optimistic line of resistance, but it would make sense to me that over the course of this year, uh, if gold does test the top side of resistance on this very long term ascending channel, again, this is very, very optimistic. But if it does happen, I do imagine it like if, if all the stars align for gold, everything has to go perfectly for gold for this to play out. Um, I think gold by maybe by a year from when it started correcting. So again, end of August could potentially come up to like 2,600 bucks, 26, 2,700 bucks. So that is the best case scenario for gold. Again, you guys always look for, just keep an eye on the short term, keep an eye on this ascending channel. And uh, again, this potential line of resistance right here, because those are as far as the short to medium term, definitely what's gonna come into play. On the bottom side, if gold does, break below this another nice thing here is you kind of see a double bottom playing out so it's good to see that it's not it's good to see not a lower low it did really bounce up here but if gold comes down here sets a lower low from this low over here back way way in june of 2020 um comes to test the bottom side of this descending channel then i definitely think there's more downside ahead so Again, you guys keep it on it for yourself. Silver, very similar looking thing here with silver. So silver is has a few things going on. So I'll explain these. Silver is at this point in time coming to a very, very significant inflection point on the shorter term time frame. So you can see here, silver is currently below previous support of this nice little rally, this nice little ascending channel that we've been following for a while. If you guys have been tuning in, I was very bullish on chat. <laughs> Very bullish on silver, like any 2020, uh, any 2020 going into 2021, but it did fail me. Silver has a way of really just messing with me. But silver, if it does break above, like if silver can break back up to, so over the course, if silver breaks out of this short term downtrend beginning on February 1st, silver has actually been in a downtrend. So you see the line of resistance here on the downtrend and then the new line of resistance that was previous support here on this uptrend. So just to play it safe by April 1st, once again, if if silver can close above $28, like close a daily above $28, that would make me very confident in the fact that we have reclaimed a very strong ascending channel. And it's very likely silver ultimately like look how strong this line of resistance is, you guys like this is such a strong line of resistance here just on this greater uptrend i think it's very likely that by uh the end of april if, if this plays out real quick because we know silver can be volatile and silver is definitely in my opinion a more exciting investment than gold just because it's a smaller market cap takes less capital inflow it's uh, way below its all-time high which we'll, we'll talk about right after this as we zoom out to the greater price target but uh, I do think it's very likely if we do break above this, maybe by maybe by the summer we hit like thirty five uh, a thirty five dollar silver price. So very exciting there on the more medium term time frame. Long term, uh, longer term, I think it's very likely. Again, this is very optimistic here that silver ultimately tests the top side of resistance on the long term ascending channel. So again, this is it's actually this makes me a little more comfortable, you guys. I think this is more likely. Dis, uh, discount the absolute top, you guys know I like to do that. So I think that this is a lot more likely if you're talking about a conservative price target for silver. Silver, keep in mind this this cyan line right here um is silver's previous high silver is still way below its previous like all-time high way back in 2011 of 50 dollars and uh, again silver 
just because it has it, it, it there's more like uses for silver than gold as well it's way below its all-time high the silver gold ratio is in favor of silver uh speaking historically so i think silver best case scenario could come up to like the 50 dollars region test its previous all-time high and even again because the, the world is printing so much fiat currencies and uh, people are going to want to sell money assets like silver gold once again bitcoin which we focus on a lot here on the channel uh it wouldn't surprise me to see it's 60 dollars silver maybe by the end of the summer so maybe we'll get that summer rally in precious metals once again but we'll just have to wait and see again the short term you're gonna you're really gonna have to keep an eye on uh silver which is once again reaching a very important point so keep a close eye on silver on these levels right here on these trend lines uh moving on i hope you guys let me know below what you guys think of gold and silver which you guys like more what's your favorite mining company all that good stuff because yeah it's been a while since we covered this on the channel and i'm actually having a pretty fun time talking about gold and silver uh i would be stoked if the shiny stuff happens to pop off again but again you guys will just have to follow this day by day because these are both still technically in long-term correct term corrections and it's important to keep in mind that there's uh potentially even more downside ahead because we are in a medium term medium to long term downtrend so that said again give me guys thoughts below always love talking shop with you guys in the comments let's dive in to once again the sponsored review of phoenix gold resources so reviving past producing assets moving on so we'll just quickly go over the website and then we'll dive into the investor presentation so um very simple website here just some press releases as always you guys go to the website for yourself i'll link it down below if you guys want to do more research but i'll just go over a few of the key things that i think are important to share with you guys so website pretty simple let's go to about real quick and then as always the investors tab which is the most important in my mind so team right here will actually cover the team you guys know like the a team is at the foundation of every good company of every literally everything that it will find at a significant level of success like the waste family we're a team so a team is very very important when you're trying to analyze a company andrew lee ceo and director where this is the only one we're going to cover right now Andrew has also been involved in the junior mining industry for the past 15 years. During that time, Andrew has served on the board of several companies, both listed in TSX Venture and the CSE, and held an executive role as VP of Megastar Development Corp. Andrew holds a Bachelor of Science degree from University of British Columbia and continues to be an active entrepreneur, being involved in several private ventures. Uh, so again, as always, you guys look for the, go over some of the team for yourself, but we're just focusing on the CEO in this case. So that said, let's move on to just straight into the investor presentation. Um, Phoenix Gold Resources building on past producing assets in Newfoundland and Nevada. Uh, disclaimer: I will have the full disclaimer below for you guys as well. Uh, not going to obviously not going to read through that. Building on past producing assets, Newfoundland, New York Harbor property, historical production: 90 tons of ore, extracting, grading: 3 to 12 percent copper and 7 percent zinc. Historical resource estimates of 200,000 tons non-compliant. Extensive data from comp uh, compiled from various companies: over 19,000 meters of drilling, high-grade copper and zinc, with noteworthy concentrations for cobalt. Nevada, which is their other project, their other uh, one of their other mines they're looking at. Phoenix Gold Project, historical production in prolific gold region of Battle Mountain, adjacent to Newmont or Barrick. Uh, so Barrick Gold, obviously you guys, ticker symbol G O L D, one of the bit, literally the biggest, uh, the biggest gold mining stock on the markets. So, I mean, just to see that in here, just to know they're somewhat affiliated, uh, even even by proximity, that's um, in my mind, that's good. Why New York Harbor property in Newfoundland? Significant land package, five licenses, 156 claims, totaling 3,900 hectares. 11 zones of copper, zinc, and rich massive sulfides, highly prospective uh, for exploration upside. So, any of you guys, copper and zinc are obviously going to be used very heavily in the future because ev every car manufacturer, not even Tesla, but like GM, uh, Volkswagen, like everyone's going to be making EVs. And when you make EVs, you need a lot of copper and a lot of zinc, okay? So, the deposit at New York Harbor comprises a series of state uh, strata bound cypress type volcanogenic CU and ZN massive sulfide lenses hosted by simply flooded uh, ophiolitic mafic volcanic rocks in the Bay of Islands complex. Sorry if I stumble over some of these words, you guys. These are not these are not easy words to pronounce if you're not familiar with the, with the geology of it. So New York Harbor historical production. Uh, it's pretty cool looking at these pictures and all these again ge like geologically mapped pictures right here. Uh, as many of you like. I focus so much on like very cutting edge, like revolutionary sectors, like uh, it's kind of the tagline on the channel here. But this stuff really interests me. Uh, interests me. I do come from a farming background, so I like I like this stuff just from a pure interest perspective as well. So I just want to make that clear. 
approximately 90 tons of ore grading 3 to 12 percent once we just read that your harbor exploration potential extensive or uh, exploration by various companies with drilling totaling over 19,000 meters on the new york harbor discovery of 11 zones copper and rich massive sulfides and several resource and estimates many of the intervening area between zones are untested and appear to be open in more directions uh exploration potential shallow diamond drilling completed in service uh noranda exploration 1991 intersected uh 0.6 meters grading 26.2 percent zinc 3.2 percent lead 3.3 uh, percent copper and 530 grams uh gt of silver and 100 uh and 16.9 gt gold in a new zone 400 uh, meters south of the mining workings of the k zone so I'll just read through that you guys again always go over this for yourself i'm gonna try to keep this somewhat quick and just explain to you guys what i think is uh, good about this project so uh obviously we have to read this why phoenix gold project project strategic location is next to nevada gold mines llc phoenix 42 gold copper mine a jv between barrack 61.5 percent and newmont 38.5 percent project lies within nevada gold mines approved environmental impact savings eis and permitted plan of operations you guys always want to make sure uh, all the regulatory clearing are are cleared all the regulatory hurdles are cleared i should say so exploration upside this would be cool to visit one of these like this is sick i've never been to something that looks like this so it'd be very cool to visit something like this one day in my opinion uh let me know if you guys have because this is i mean just looking at it like it's definitely a massive operation uh targeting surface oxide mineralization and high potential and potential high grade sulfides at depth uh phoenix gold project and just looking at some ownership here claims drill tested whatnot plumas Property position, two patented claims, one mill site claim, and uh, extra lateral rights. Uh, extra lateral rights allow PXA to both explore and mine down dip even into Newmont lands. Um, targets an outcropping high grade gold system, northern section that claims to have never been drilled. What the heck? Historical shaft of the Plumas property. I don't know what that is, but that looks kind of spooky to be honest. Don't want to see that. Uh, El Dorado, 1.1 1. Uh, 1 claim. 20 acres 1500 by 600 located adjacent to sunshine pits um surrounding mineral properties and strategy in the battle mountain so again you guys read over for these for these for yourself and then they close it out with the team so again at every at the base of every great operation is a great team so look over for the team for yourself you guys again if you're interested in checking out this um this company capital structure again mark cap you guys know i'm a geek for small mark caps this has a mark cap of of, of, as of february 26 at least of under 10 million dollars so microscopic micro cap and uh or mar a microscopic market cap which makes it a micro cap uh again very exciting takes less capital inflow to appreciate the individual share price again this is an ot stock otc stock over the counter stock with the ticker symbol pgrcf so again you guys go take a look at this for yourself we appreciate the sponsors of this channel appreciate the sponsors of the waves family especially if you're sticking around really appreciate you showing them some love and uh yeah they're the ones who make this possible so again you guys very important to understand this is a we thing not a me thing and uh yeah go check out this company for yourself do your own research as always if you're thinking about getting invested um and yeah i think we'll call it there so i appreciate you guys watching and until next time always remember take action make waves peace